I want to take some time today to talk about the BC Green Party, because I actually think they're running one of the more interesting Green Party campaigns we've seen in a long time. Sonia first and I really impressed at the leaders' debate, and they're projected to take a couple of seats and sitting around 10% of the popular vote right now. That's enough to potentially hold a balance of power in a tight legislature, and to be able to hold pretty considerable influence. Now, historically, I haven't really been a big Green Party supporter, as an organization that can be a little inconsistent. Sometimes they're not great, sometimes they are, and it really depends a lot on leadership and party infrastructure. And the BC Greens seem like a pretty mature party. And so their leader, Sonia Fursenow, seems to have some pretty strong ideas. And for starters, I think a big part of why she availed herself well in the debates is because she's a high school teacher. She has an MA in history and a Bachelor's of Education, and she worked as a high school teacher prior to getting into politics. I maintain, teachers can get it done. Also, before we go any further, I do want to take a second to highlight, the BC Greens also seem like the only party who have any actual personality in their candidate photos. Some of them, like this one of Nick Dickinson Wilde with his kid, are just fun. Some, like this one of Deviani Singh, include puppies, but this one of Tristan Cavers with his kid is just terrific. I really like this. There's some personality here. I prefer this over a whole bunch of dudes in suits. <laughs> Conservatives. But what I really want to dig into is their platform, because it is genuinely one of the most well-written platforms I've ever seen. I've read quite a few of these things, and this one's the best. And I really want to highlight why, because I'd love to see other parties start to do it going forward, and because I think it deserves a serious look from people. So as we talked about earlier, the BC Conservatives outrageously do not have a platform. They don't have a platform to run on. Just the broad strokes. Nothing costed, nothing finalized. The NDP have a costed platform, their final, 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 final one, but they even took time aside in it to directly attack John Rustad and the Conservatives. And it's one of the main problems I have with the NDP campaign. They are way more focused on pointing out how bad the Conservatives are than talking about how good they are and what they want to do to help BC. And that brings us to the BC Green platform. For starters, Sonia first now establishes the importance of a cool jacket. Then they do the standard thing where they lay out the broad strokes of their vision. That's not entirely new, but then each individual segment starts with how they're thinking about the problem, defines the problem, and lays out their policy plan. It is straightforward, clear, and makes it easy to understand how the party's going to approach the issues. Now, this also leads to a bit of a problem in that the platform is humongous. It is 72 pages long. Like, platforms are usually around this long, the NDP platform 66 pages, but it is a lot more full of graphics, including this puppy. And it features John Rustad looking scary in a segment they call, What's the Rustad Risk? Seven different times. Nice to see they really focused on the people of BC. So I want to take a deep dive into just one topic in the green platform, and then we're going to look at the broad strokes of the rest, because I highly encourage you to dig in. It's interesting and not that hard to read. This is a party that thinks in paragraphs, and they see the intersectional relationship between issues. They view the connection between health, poverty, education, and housing as all being part of one larger problem. And it's very encouraging to see a party that does that. So for education, they lay out that they want to try to think of education comprehensively and get rid of fragmentation through things like pilot projects and ad hoc funding and try to bring more equity across the system. They want to address staffing shortages as well as the high cost of tuition and living for post-secondary students. They define the central problems as struggling to attract staff, chronic underinvestment, and lack of public supports. So their specific proposals include an education workforce strategy, including paid internships for teachers and early childhood educators, including financial support during their internships, simplifying the certification process for teachers from other provinces, creating bursaries for educators who are going to work in remote districts, places where demand is highest. They also want to increase pay for EAs and bring forward loan forgiveness plans for education workers. That is a real plan that will address the teacher shortage. For childcare, they want a universal early childhood education system, improving access to affordable childcare spaces for kids under five, spending $250 million of expanded funding, establishing a provincial before and after school care program, and expanding $10 a day childcare. For the K-12 system, they want to modernize public school funding and infrastructure. They want to do comprehensive facility updates and reform. They want to expand community use of school facilities to build better connections between schools and communities. They want to create province-wide inclusive ed policies and sustainable funding models. They want to expand mental health supports and increase the counselor to student ratio to implement the Universal Student Lunch Program, expand access to resources in French, English, and Indigenous languages and American Sign Language. They want to continue with SOGI 123. And for post-secondary, they want to increase access, funding, and improve equity. That's just education. It's two pages of a 72-page platform that is remarkably comprehensive. 
Seriously, I'm not a Green Party hardliner. I've never voted for them. I'm just impressed. So on to the broad strokes of the rest of it. For housing, they want to bring on minimum standards for rental properties, and they want to spend $1.5 billion to construct 26,000 non-market housing units every year. That is public housing, a massive increase, and that would significantly lower housing costs. They also want to support housing nonprofits. They're the only party that's focused on expanding housing without expanding profits to developers. They want to protect the existing affordable housing stock and to address issues around property investments. They also want to address climate proofing. They want to massively expand transit funding and accessibility. They want to expand funding for public drug policies by $900 million a year. They want to increase healthcare spending by $571 million over three years by building community healthcare centers in all 93 ridings, staffed by doctors or nurse practitioners. And they want to create a centralized referral system. They want to raise social assistance and disability rates and significantly increase the taxes on people making more than $350,000 a year. They want to raise the food crisis grant to $200 a month and provide more assistance to seniors and recognize all indigenous governments. This is a transformative platform. So I think there's a couple of things we need to talk about here. First up, I acknowledge it is unlikely the Green Party are going to form a government. And I think they recognize that too. That's why they're willing to put forward such an ambitious platform. It's costly and they recognize that it's going to be expensive, but it's going to be largely paid for by tax increases on the very wealthy and heavy emitters. So the budget they have would still run a deficit between one and $3 billion each year over the first three. And they propose that the majority of it would be paid by tax increases on heavy emitters, big corporations, and the wealthy. They want to bring in a new marginal tax rate of 18% for corporate profits over a billion dollars a year. And it's specifically targeted the wealthy. I can't blame them for trying this. And I think it's important to at least have a party in the legislature that seems to be thinking in paragraphs, especially if they may be required to build a coalition or hold up the minority government. But I honestly think they're worth giving a look to. And I know NDP supporters are going to jump in my comments freaking out about vote splitting. So I do want to caution you. Be responsible about the weight of your vote in the riding you're in. If you're in a riding where the NDP are very close with the conservatives, I'm not going to tell you to vote strategically, not my place, but I'd suggest it's at least something you consider. But I'd also suggest you consider giving the Green Party a serious look because the BC Greens really impressed me with this platform. I'll throw a link in the description so you can check it out yourself.